Trump has arrived and the preparation for his first arrival to India began long back. Much of the talk around his visit is the trade deal. Besides trade, things have changed between India and the US. The US-India relationship has evolved over the decades. When the relationship between two nations changes qualitatively and fundamentally, both nations benefit from each other. This is how the Indo-US relationship has evolved over the 70 years. This means that not only that India needs help from the US, US also needs India for various reasons. Prime Ministers Vajpayee, Manmohan Singh and Modi along with the US Presidents Bush, Obama and Trump have described Indo-US relationship as a strategic partnership. If we forget the trade part of the visit of any US president, we will find a lot happening on the strategic side. For example, last month the US government caught five people including one Pakistani who were trying to buy and export banned technologies that could be used to make nuclear weapons in Pakistan. During investigations, it was found that this mission was commenced by Mohammed Kamran Wali and he was linked to Pakistan's Advanced Engineering Research Organization. This organization is very safely located in one of the military cities of Pakistan named Wa, and it was run by retired Air Force officers. The Pakistan Atomic Energy Commission was also linked to this illegal mission. You might be wondering why we are talking about this now. We know that in the past, Pakistan have been smuggling nuclear related elements from America and other western countries. Now let's keep this piece of information aside for a bit. Just a few days back, Indian authorities detained a Chinese ship off the coast of Gujarat on the suspicion that it could be put for civil or nuclear use. So, how did India catch this vessel? Now we have to connect the dots. When Americans encounter something suspicious, which could be any sort of threat to India, they inform us. Not only America, there are a group of 29 countries that share information on ships that carry suspicious stuff. So, the suspicion regarding this deal of a Pakistani in America and the Chinese ship was that Pakistan's Advanced Engineering Research Organization was trying to procure items to put on unmanned aerial vehicles to create a disaster. An unarmed aerial vehicle could easily drop bombs weighing 2 tons and the results would have been disastrous. Pakistan's Advanced Engineering Research Organization is on the Commerce Department of America's entity list as it is suspected to be involved in nuclear smuggling. We should also note that China does not have the technology that Pakistan was trying to smuggle from US and the technology that Pakistan was trying to smuggle out of America was electromagnetic shielding. We would need shielding when we are in a field of electromagnetic radiation. So, when inquired by the American authorities, the Pakistani had apparently said that this technology would be used in diagnostic labs in Pakistan to shield from the MRI radiation. Well, even an 8-year-old could lie better than that. I mean, seriously, when you are sent on such a sensitive mission, you should at least learn to lie better on the event of getting caught. So, jokes aside, it is possible that Pakistan was trying to get the technology from America, use the Chinese vessel and create chaos which would have been extremely disastrous. But this was stopped as we got intel from the countries that we are in strategic alliance with. We saw that there are a group of 29 countries that share information on ships that carry suspicious stuff. This supervision is done by radars and other surveillance systems of each country and US is the key to the network of these 29 countries and the Indo-Pacific operation. This in fact is a relationship of equals which means both the countries benefit from this strategic alliance and for India to be a part of this network, the strategic alliance between India and US is important. And that is how India becomes a key partner in the US-India relationship. Now, if we look back at the US-India relationship, it was neither strategic nor beneficial. Until 50 years after India's independence, only three US presidents visited India. 
Dwight Eisenhower in 1959, Richard Nixon in 1969 and Jimmy Carter in 1978. Then between the year 2000 and now, we have had five US presidents that visited India. They were Bill Clinton in 2000, George Bush in 2006, Barack Obama in 2010 and in 2015. Now we have Donald Trump in that list. This says that we will have five visits from the US presidents in 20 years while we had only three in 50 years in the past. This proves the qualitative evolution of the relationship between India and US over the years. When we look back at the early stages of Indo-US relationship, there was always an upper hand part played by the US, which means US and India were not bilaterally equal. In 60s, unfortunately, India became a client state of US, while strategically India became closer to the Soviet Union, as Pakistan was an American ally at that time. India became a client state of US because it had devastating grain shortages at that time and became completely dependent on American grain. The then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi was uncomfortable about the situation but there was no other solution too. Plus, as Gandhi's ideology leaned towards Soviet Union, Nixon and Indira Gandhi were not able to fix the tensions between the two nations. When Jimmy Carter came to India in 1978, Moraji Desai was the Prime Minister of India. Carter expected to get a pacifist Indian Prime Minister who would endorse the Nuclear Proliferation Treaty. However, things did not go as planned for Carter as he wanted Desai to call off India's nuclear ambition and had asked India to sign a Nuclear Proliferation Treaty. But Desai said no to him and that sought the relations and the visit of Jimmy Carter was aimed at putting the relationship on an even footing. Even after this visit, ties between the two countries never really took off because the Carter administration continued to pressure India to give up its nuclear program even though they turned a blind eye to the development of atomic weapons by Pakistan. Again, there was no qualitative improvement in the Indo-US relationship. After Jimmy Carter, there was a really long gap until the next President of United States came to India. By 2000, India's stature started to change. The change is essentially based on two reasons. First reason is, in the period 1989 to 1990, the Cold War ended, Soviet Union disappeared and the Berlin Wall had fallen. So, India had to find its position in the new world. The second reason would be, India started to reposition itself economically in the post-Cold War world, which was done by Narasimha Rao. After that, India's economy started to boom and become big. This attracted the then US President Bill Clinton to come to India. He travelled to India in March 2000 and even before that, he played a key role in forcing Pakistan to withdraw troops that had occupied key positions in the Kargil sector of the line of control in 1999. During the 1999 war between Pakistan and India, the US under Clinton sided with India and that was the first time that country had supported India against Pakistan. Clinton's diplomatic intervention in the 1999 Kargil war had helped India. Clinton warned Pakistan to withdraw their position behind the line of control, else he said that the US would blame Pakistan for the war. In 1991, India initiated a policy of economic liberalization that opened doors to foreign investment. This was also a major boost to trade relations between US and India. His visit was timed two years after the US imposed military sanctions to India and Pakistan for 1998 nuclear tests. When Bush came to India, both the countries were talking about a nuclear deal that soon got finalized. This is how slowly the strategic quality sinked between the two countries and slowly America was cutting Pakistan loose from its association with that country. Obama's two visits to India made the world realize the strong ties between India and America. The effect of this evolution over the years is that India is now a country that is being taken seriously. This visit of Trump's will be, to quote senior journalist Shekhar Gupta here, the most de-Pakistanized visit of an American president to India. India's relationship with US has genuinely moved into the strategic domain. If India and US agrees with each other on strategic issues and work together, 
trade will automatically boom and open new doors for both the nations. Stay tuned with us for more such updates. This is Nisha PS. Thank <laughs> you.